Wonderful, wonderful. I see someone say, hey, LaShonda, it's Deja, Sandra. Oh, goodness, Tina. Oh, this is awesome. So many wonderful ladies are on the call tonight. Angela, Marcy Thomas, Brown Girl Collection, Karen. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to have to check the chat. Um, You guys are so many wonderful ladies I see are on the chat and really excited and ready to go tonight with me inside the Sister Sense Power Circle. Tonight, our conversation is all about your blessings and your business, how to get what you want and live how you please. Now, before we get started, I always, always, always like to open up the conversation so I can get a sense of who's on the call, who you are, where you're coming from, what your business is. So it might get a little crazy for two seconds because I'm going to unmute everybody. And if you overlap, it's quite all right. Just kind of shout out who you are and, and what you're up to tonight. Uh, go there and then come back to the 11 o'clock. Well, hello, morning, ladies. To the 8 o'clock. Hello, hello. And then everyone I is come. unmuted right now. But I so tell you, I almost was late to, because hello. I couldn't hit the, the I hello. mean, were you in both services? I think I, I can hear multiple people at one time. Right, right. Tonight. And I mean, oh, my God. That, it was, that was so awesome. Okay. Hold on a second. I think there's a lady on the call having another conversation at the same time as me. So let's see. If you hit star six, can you all hit, can you hit star six to unmute yourself so that I can uh, one by one hear who's on the call tonight before we get started? Now, if you're trying to hit star six and you're having trouble with that, please let me know. But unfortunately, it seems like every time I hit Every time I hit <laughs> the unmute for everybody, it just sounds like chaos. So um, hit star six and introduce yourself if you're out there. I know you are. And hopefully we can uh, get started. Hello. Okay. Hello. Who's on the call? Hi. My name is Karen Afari, and this is my first time joining the call. I'm so excited to be a part. Um, the business I do is credit cleaning lady. I do credit repair and credit restoration for people. Oh, that's interesting. You definitely have a unique business. So tell me, how did you get on the call tonight? What brought you on? Well, I had somehow I guess I joined the email list, and I've um, gotten them, and the title of the seminar tonight was just very intriguing to me, and I decided to just make sure I put it on my calendar to join. Um, I really wanted to join the seminar you had in January, but I missed it, so I'm excited to be here tonight. Okay, good. Well, just so that you know, um, the January conference, which is the Sister Sense Power Circle, is an annual event. So if you go to powercircle.sistersense.com, you'll get the information about the January 2014 conference. Um, as of today, there are two more early bird seats left. They're going pretty fast this year. And so for 30 to 45 women, and let, the lady said to me this, this year in January, they said, don't make it any bigger than this. This is absolutely perfect. So um, if you do want to early register, like I said, there are two seats left at powercircle.sense.com. And um, because one special woman, Donna Marie Johnson, said to me, LaShonda, are you going to do virtual this year? I absolutely am. So for 2014, if you can't make, out to the, make it out to the live event, You can also register for a virtual ticket and watch via live webinar stream, too, at powercircle.sistersense.com. So thank you so much for being on the call. Um, You'll never miss anything because I always have replays. Um, So I hope you enjoy tonight. And if you've got questions, definitely let me know once we get to Q&A at the ending. Okay? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to introduce themselves before we get started? Yes. Hi, this is uh, Tracy Cooper in New Jersey, the Resume Workshop, and this is my first time joining. And um, I'm excited because I do listen to the uh, replays of many of your um, other uh, items. So Mm -hmm. I'm forward to hearing it tonight. And um, I'm just not a resume writer, but I also facilitate workshops on how to get a job in this economy. Oh, that's awesome, and that's definitely something that I'm sure a lot of people want to know, especially when they're transitioning and if, you know, unfortunately some people have lost their jobs and they're looking for new ways um, to kind of supplement that income or try new venues. Like I said before, ladies, what I want you to do 
is make sure that as we're talking, you go on to Twitter, hashtag SSPC13. That's the hashtag for tonight so you can stay uh, connected to the conversation. Put your link up there so that people can know what you're doing, what your website or your business is, and, of course, they can start to follow you. Sometimes I find that even in my circle, there are ladies who join the call that I've never actually started following on Twitter. So it's a great way for us to expand our circle inside the conversation. So thank you again for joining tonight. You're welcome. Okay, so one more lady, and then we're going to get started. Anyone else want to introduce himself? I'm so happy there are new people on the call, too. This is awesome. Hello, can you give the hashtag again, please? Sure, absolutely. The hashtag, and I'm also going to put that in Twitter again. It's pound SSPC13. That stands for Sister Sense Power Circle 2013. I've also put it in the Twitter um, in the chat box that we have here as well. Okay, ladies. So, Again, thank you so much. You can hit star five to mute yourself back. Um, we are inside the Sister Sense Power Circle, and tonight's call is about blessings and business, how to get what you want and live how you please. Okay. Ooh. Now, um, as I always tell you guys, the reason behind every single call, there's always something that kind of motivates me to say, I want to do a session today. I want to talk about inside my circle. Today's call is a part of my Unblock Your Blessings free 90-day challenge. For those of you who are not familiar with that, um, at the beginning of October, I launched the Unblock Your Blessings 90-day challenge, and every week I share one step inside to 12 steps of how you can build your best business life and self, okay? So um, it already has started, but essentially the Unblock Your Blessings Challenge begins for you the day you sign up. You get the first step, and every week thereafter for 12 weeks, you get a step within the sessions and um, the basically the lessons that I've learned as far as how to unblock my blessings and make things happen for myself in, in my personal life and in my business, a combination of all, all two things and just about everything, um, figuring out how to make things happen for myself, I realized I think that I was really good at. And so I kind of took the opportunity to sit down and, and step by step write it out so that I could share it with you all. So like I said, the Unblock Your Blessings 90-Day Challenge is a sense motivated me to do the session today. And I'm going to be talking about one step in particular um, because I feel that there are a lot of things that we all want um, but in particular, as entrepreneurs, you know, we want to be able to see the fruits of our labor and really turn our passions into profit. So that's going to be the focus of our conversation today. And um, let me just kind of adjust myself here. I see you guys are tweeting away, which is absolutely awesome. Um, that's essentially going to be the focus of what we talk about today because here, here are a couple of things that I want to shed light on. I realize that there are a lot of ladies in my circle, when they come to me, they're excited and energized by the concept of learning and trying new things and really get their business off the ground. But at the same time, there are a lot of women who are tired. They're tired because they're essentially working a nine-to-five and just kind of waiting for that point where they can be like, peace out. <laughs> I'm doing my thing full time, and I don't need this job anymore. So they're tired of working their nine-to-five, tired of attracting the same people who say, you know, I want what you got, but I can't afford it. You know, I've actually got a call coming up this week, and it's really focused on um, one of the ladies in my circle who was like, look, okay, I'm so tired of attracting these broke folks. They want it. They say they can't afford it, and I really need to attract the right client. So being tired of attracting the right, I'm sorry, the wrong kind of person to your business and essentially being tired of putting out a lot of effort and waiting for something to happen. That stuff is just emotionally draining, right? So essentially, my goal is to help you focus on those things that you want. You want to accomplish certain things in your business, adequate payment for the time and the skills and the services. I, I can't express that enough as a service professional. Getting paid for what you know and the time that you put in it 
That's what we all want. Appreciation for hard work, commitment, and dedication, putting in the time, especially as a mom. Being a mom is a thankless job. So, you know, it, it, when your son or your daughter or your spouse comes up and says, Mama, you did a good job, just being appreciated for that hard work, commitment, and dedication, I think that's something that we all desire. The ability to empower and inspire other women, and not just to do that, but to turn that passion into something that is purposeful and profitable. I know across the board, I work with so many different types of women, but that seems to be the underlining theme among a lot of us, just wanting to be able to inspire and empower other women in a way that is both purposeful and profitable, essentially something that we want to be able to do. Abundance something else that we desire, abundance in the form of true happiness, being able to do what we love, love what we do, work for the ones we love, and really accomplish those things that we feel are fulfilling. That's the final thing as far as this list of overarching desires that everybody here has their own unique business, but what exactly ties us together are these commonalities, these wants, goals, and dreams. Feeling that you've really accomplished something, you've achieved what I call unblocking your blessings so that you can see the fruits of your labor and see those dreams become real, that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about essentially how you not only unblock those blessings, but really get what you want and live how you please. I'm a techie girl, right? You know, I've got web tech girl to guru. I talk a lot about tech, blogging, and social media. But all of that stuff, it, these are just the tools, right, the tools that you use. There's some really important fundamentals that if you don't scratch the surface of those things, social media, Facebook, Twitter, blogging, all that stuff is useless because essentially you've got to get to the heart of the matter and figure out what's blocking these blessings for you so that you can move forward in your business, okay, which is why that's the focus for the call for tonight as part of unblockyourblessings.com, which I said started in October and ultimately culminates in the Sister Sense Power Circle Conference in January when we've got so many lovely, wonderful ladies coming out to speak. And actually, uh, Rochelle Shaw is going to be one of the ladies coming out as well over the course of the three days at the Loft Hotel. So let's jump in. As I know you all are like, I know, I know, I know, this is what you're going to talk about. Let's get started. Let's get started. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the key to what you need to do. Like I said, tonight is based on my 12 steps to unblocking your blessings. And one of those steps is what I believe to be a, a really big one, and it's all about choosing action. This morning I had one of the ladies in the circle, she sent me an email because that step went out for the, the women who started in the beginning of October, that step went out today and they were like, oh, my God. <laughs> she said, LaShonda, this is so important. I love this because I was about to lose it yesterday. So this message that you sent out and every step I send out in the form of an audio that you can listen to for about 15 to 20 minutes. She said, when you sent this out, this is just for me, it, it helps so much because I was about to lose it less, yesterday. Now, um, this particular step is about action and how you choose action over just about everything else, but I'm going to focus on a couple of things that I believe are really blocking you from getting what you want as far as your business and your life. So let's talk about the wants first before I get into what you need to do to be, uh, to active, to be active, I should say, and how you need to work towards that. I want you to write down right now three things that you believe that you want as far as being blessed, feeling like this is my blessing, this is something that I've attained and I've accomplished through the grace of God. What are those blessings that you want for yourself and your business? I want you to write down three things and think about that right now. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. Don't overthink this process, okay? Just immediately think to yourself, what do I want? That's number one. Okay, don't overthink it. Just write it down. Freeform it. Now, as you're thinking about those things that you want as far as your life, but, you know, I'm a business girl, so I talk a lot about my business. So what do you want in your business? At that same thing, time of writing down those three things, I want you to think about what you do not want with respect to your business. Whatever comes to mind, I want you to write that down. As you know, when I talk about my coaching or my consulting, I say I don't do coaching and consulting. I, I give clarity sessions because these are opportunities for you to come on this call or webinar with me and get clear on what you need to do to move forward. 
right? And a lot of times we know that overarching thing is that we're tired of the job or we're tired of the, the broke folks and the freebie hoes, but we, we don't really know specifically what we want and do not want, right? So this is an opportunity to get a group coaching where together we work that out, okay? What is it that I do not want in my business? And, and what is it that I do want in my business? Now, when I talk about unblock your blessings, and for those of you who actually listen to the calls, you know that every call has three components. I give you a choice, right? And today I'm talking about how you choose action. I'm going to give you some action steps so that you can create an agenda for yourself over the course of the next 90 days, right? So I give you a choice, and then we chat, right? So in that process of me chatting, I ultimately am sharing some stories and experiences that I've gone through myself, my family members, friends, my, my coaching clients, so that you can get real-life examples of how this choice works, how you integrate it into your business. And then after the choice and the chat, we get into the challenge. This is where you go from listening to me and my lovely voice, right, to actually implementing and trying this stuff out for yourself so you can figure out what works versus what does not work for your business. It's not just about going on these webinars or teleconferences and reading these articles or watching these videos, we've got to put this stuff into practice so that we can actually see it work for our business and unblock the blessings. That's how it really works. In order to make it happen, you've got to implement, right? So now that I've given you the choice to choose action, I'm going to talk about that over the course of tonight's webinar call session, however you want to phrase it. I'm going to go in some chat and talk to you about the benefits and how this works, how it, you can apply it to your business. So my first story for tonight is called Consultation Gone Wrong. <laughs> um, there are a lot of things that um, when I talk about the step of choosing action, it's, it's around this idea of choosing action over anger. Um, and like I talked about the young lady who sent me an email this morning, I believe it was Carmen, she said, thank God you sent this out because I was about to lose it yesterday. There are a lot of times in our life that things happen that are it's obviously out of our control because who wants to be angry, right? Things that happen in our lives that are out of our control that make us absolutely angry and want to stop us from doing the things that we need to do to get what we want to make things happen. And so in the step that I talk about, and I'm not going to talk about the stories I shared on action versus anger. You, when you join Unblock Your Blessings, you can listen to that. I want to talk about this particular instance, consultation gone wrong, where I was absolutely livid. If, if that was a day I felt like I wasted my time, <laughs> that was one of those days. Um, and, and what I learned from that and how I was able to turn free consultations into paid consultations and actually get paid for free information. I think that's something a lot of service professionals want, right? How do you figure out how to do this and give out this information without feeling like you're being used and abused by the very same people you want to help? So let me tell you how this all went down. Um, I knew, I would say early on in the game, I'm a service professional, that a part of the process of being a service professional and trying to sell my services as a web designer is that I had to talk to my potential clients. You know, they need to talk to you. They need to know who you are, and they need to make sure you're legit. You know what you're talking about. Nobody wants to give money to a stranger. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this conference consultation thing, 15 to 30 minute free consultations. And trust me, I was resistant to this for years. I didn't want to talk to nobody. If you know my story, I always say I'm a typer, not a talker. Trust me, I don't want to be on the phone. My number was locked up like Fort Knox. <laughs> I was like, nobody knew. I don't want to talk to nobody. But I said, okay, one, I, I have to get over this resistance of not wanting to be on the phone. I don't even talk to my friends and family. My closest friends, honest to goodness, and I, I should be ashamed to say this, but it's because I'm so focused on what I do every couple of months, and my friends know it because they're probably <laughs> they're the same way as me. We get on the call and we're like, hey, I haven't spoken to you in six months. What's good? Those are my closest friends. So it's just a part of my personality. But one of the things that we have to do as business owners, especially as entrepreneurs, when you're not just doing the business but you're trying to market it, is you've got to be conscious of your weaknesses, right, and how they block you from getting what you want. So I had to be conscious of the fact that I hated the phone with a love and living passion, and that in order for me to really connect with customers, I had to fix that. I'm, I, I don't want to outsource. I'm, I, I'm not a Fortune 500 that has a telecommunication staff in India. I've got to be on the calls myself which means I have to work out that personality flaw and fix it. So before I even tell you some steps, that's kind of a step in and of itself. 
What are your personality flaws? What are things that you are resistant to with respect to your business? Those are some of the things that are unblocking you from getting what you want and make and living how you want. Now, okay, so I got to this point where I realized I needed to be on calls, and I got on this consultation gone wrong. Um, this was actually one of the ladies in my circle. She's a part of my network. We've um, we've spoken socially, virtually, online before, and she said, you know what, LaShonda, um, I'd like you to take a look at my website and um, help me with it because I know you're a web designer and I want you to assist me in updating the space. And I was, sure, I'm excited. I get on the phone call with her, and she says, okay, well, um, what do you think about the website? And this is one of my first consultations, getting like one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. I'm like, okay, well, I can tell you that this is wrong, and um, you may want to change this. And, well, what do you think about that? How is this working for you? And I, I'm talking to her this is over the course of an hour, right? And um, she's like, oh, okay, I didn't see that before. And I said, okay, well, here's your sign-up option, and let's take a look at your sidebar. Let's look at your product page. Let's look at this. She's asking me a ton of questions. And I'm answering every question and telling her exactly what we're going to do as we work together, right? And I'm excited. I'm like, okay, this is a job, and I know this lady. We've talked before. And she's like, okay, LaShonda, that's a good idea. And, oh, I never looked at that before. And, oh, I didn't realize that was wrong. And, okay, that needs to be there. Okay, absolutely. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to work together. Ton of information. I get off the call from her, and a couple of days later, she, you know, I thought the call went really well. I gave her all the information. I told her exactly what she needed to do to make the site better. And, and you know, I'm thinking we're going to work together. She sends me an email um, uh, several days later, and she says, hey, LaShonda, thanks so much for our consultation session and how you mentored me. And I didn't think I was mentoring. I thought I was getting a client. She said, I want you to take a look, a look at the website. I basically did the changes that you told me myself. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> and so my, if my jaw could have dropped to the ground, like, you know, those Looney Tunes episodes, I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know I gave a free consultation session to help you redesign your site. I thought I was helping you because we're going to work together. I'm going to be your designer. So basically that consultation gone wrong in, in that instead of me promoting my skill set and getting a new client, um, she basically use my mind, you know, you know, when people say they pick your brain and pimp your mind, use, use me to get all the information she could get on how she could update the website, and then she did it herself. And then claimed that I was her coaching, <laughs> or her coach, her unpaid coach, no less, because I was the one who showed her how to make the site better and how to optimize it and make money. So uh, I guess, you know, the good thing is that I, I, in those opportunities, I get to see how much I do know and how much I can help people. But, you know, on the flip side, as a service professional, it's like, damn, it's like straight up. I, I'm, I'm so tired of people picking my brain. And somebody just said, LOL. I'm so tired of this is exactly why I didn't want to do this, exactly why I didn't want to do calls. I, don't, I, I, I hate when folks are cheap or broke or want to use me and abuse me, and I feel like, hey, this is what I'm going to get. This, uh, this sucks, right? And so I'm giving you this story because I got really angry, and I could have done a lot of things, right? I could one, I could have said some words because, first of all, I felt like she used me, right? But here's the thing that I've learned in my life, and when I, I, use, I talk about my business, I usually have my hubby as my vent session person. I go to him and I vent, but I never vent to anyone via email because I believe – those people who you hurt or dismiss on your way up might be the very same people you need on your way down. And no matter how anything happens to me, I always try to end it on as professional and positive as a note as possible because, again, you just don't know who you may need or utilize in the future. And you also have to think about in today's society, businesses don't rule anymore. People do. <laughs> businesses used to be able to tell you what it's all about and how you're going to get it, and that was that. But with the, the, the creation of social media, when people don't like stuff or they think stuff sucks, they can go online and put you on blast and ultimately put you out of business if they make it your, their ever-loving mission to do so. So I'm conscious of how I react to customers via email, via phone, and even just overall because, again, um, that social power has shifted from businesses to the general public, and you've got to be conscious of that, you know, with respect to your business. So what I ultimately decided to do is to choose action over anger, which is step number three. I said, no, I'm not going to stop doing consultations. No, I'm not going to cuss this woman out 
people spend my time and basically getting all my information for free because that is what it is. Maybe she wasn't aware of what she did. What I'm going to do is figure out how to make this better for myself. So, again, I didn't get angry. I got smart, right? I figured out what am I going to do to make sure these consultations are not going to go wrong the next time. The first thing I had to do was write down everything that went wrong in that session. And this is what you've got to do. When I said to you, think about what you want versus what you don't want. Think about those things you do not want to happen, whether it be a consultation, experience with a client, something that you don't want to happen in your business. Write them down and be conscious of them. You can start writing down now as I'm talking. If anything comes, even like, oh, God, I remember when, and this pissed me off so much. Here's the thing, and I talk to my coaching clients one-on-one about this, and I'm telling you this right now. We know exactly what we don't want in our business, whether we write it down or not. But nine times out of ten, rather than acknowledge it and try to fix it, we just wait for the frustration and, excuse my language, for the fuck-ups to happen and then get pissed off in the process. Like I said, I could just as easily, and again, excuse my French, but sometimes you just have to keep it real. I could just as easily know that I got pissed off in that consultation, go into every single one and make the same mistakes over and over and over again, and then get angry after every call when I lose a client or they take my knowledge and pit me for free, as I said before. But you don't want to do that right? You want to actually get what you want and you want to get paid. So the first part of the process is to figure out what went wrong. So again, as I'm talking to you, you can just start now and then work on this later. Write down everything that goes wrong and the things that happen that you don't like. For if, if you have frustrating instances with consultations, a lot of you do, and when we get on one-on-ones, we talk about it, start thinking about what goes wrong, Okay. That's number one. For me, I know when it comes to consultations, 101 questions. That's what I get. (laughs) People give me 101 questions, and I give them 101 answers. And then I say, okay, when you're ready to work with me, great. And more often than not, I give them – sometimes I give people enough information to do it for themselves, and so I talk talk myself out of jobs because I have so much information. you got to realize what you do to go wrong. So one of the things that I did when I realized that was kind of one of my weaknesses is I stopped doing that. I stopped getting in consultations where I let the potential client dominate and ask me 101 questions. I don't do that anymore. When I get on a consultation, I'm the one asking the questions because I'm the professional. As an expert and also as the person doing the job, I need to know where they are. I need to know what their mindset is. I need to know what actually they're looking for. I need to know what their budget is. So you think about 101 questions they're asking you, what information do you need from them? You dominate the conversation. You control how the conversation works. And then you're not sitting there in the ending going, what happened? (laughs) That's one thing that I learned how to do. Number two, know when to turn off the juice when it comes to consultation calls. Now, again, these are things that you can apply to different scenarios. And like I said, I do one-on-one consultations in my insider circle, which is, um, excuse me, it's circle com In the insider circle, I do one-on-one sessions with you every month, either one session a month or two, depending on what you want, okay? Now, in those sessions, I talk about what you need to do and how you need to fix it as I'm talking to you now. One of the things I needed to figure out was how to turn off the juice. <laughs> I give a lot of juicy information. Just keep going, oh, yeah, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. In free consultations, I had to remind myself, LaShonda, this is free. (laughs) This is for you to sell yourself, not for you to validate yourself, for you to feel good because they go, oh, LaShonda's so awesome and she knows everything. I had to stop that, right, and learn off the juice. Maybe you're like me and you've got to learn how to do that for yourself so that you can differentiate a consultation that is free versus one that is paid for your coaching, your time, your intelligence, and your expertise, Okay. And, of course, I had to learn how to get paid for free sessions. And that's something that I talked about, I believe it was about two weeks ago, I had a session on how to close more deals as a trainer, consultation, um, um, consultant, coach, expert. And I talked about how to get paid for free sessions. I'm actually going to talk about that in more detail this week in the Jumpstart Your Business call. So if you missed that session, I don't want to belabor it too much 
detailed information today because I know not everybody on the call is a service professional. But if you want to know how to close more deals um, as a service professional, you can listen to the replay on Sister Sense inside the Jumpstart Your Business call. Um, all you have to do is join if you're not a member. It's jumpstart.sistersense.com, $7 for the month. And we do four calls a month, plus you get access to all the replays and all the other information that I have on the space, videos, e-courses, what have you, right? So I talk about how to get paid for free sessions. That's something that you need to do so you can get what you want, right? You want, it to consult, you want the consultation opportunity to work. You want it to be able to educate the client. But you don't want them to walk away and then do it themselves or choose somebody else. So you've got to figure out what goes wrong in these sessions, and how you can make it right, right? So the first step is for you to, is to really be clear on that for yourself. Now, one of the ladies, like I mentioned this morning, she said to me, LaShonda, when I got this session, I knew I had to take action. I knew I had to do something. So when you think about those things that you want in your business, I want you to think about what you've done. Because this right now is all about really helping you figure out your 90-day agenda. What have you done to accomplish your goal and get what you want? Okay? So let's, I mean, I'm going to talk about one person in particular in a bit. But just before I get to the examples, I want you to think about you. What are those things that you want to accomplish in your business? I said to name at least three. And I want you to list at least the one thing that you've done over the course of the last 90 days to get that thing accomplished, to get what you want. Okay? Now, if you're not being proactive about really fixing the issues and implementing so you can get things done, you're not going to see the change, whether it be a blessing or in your business, you get what you want until you define what it is that you want and then list out how you're going to work towards those goals. Right? Now, there was one particular lady, she said to me, okay, LaShonda, I'm going to do unblock your blessings for 90 days, and then after that, I'm going to schedule some time to talk to you. And then I said to her, well, why are you waiting until after the 90 days? <laughs> why are you waiting 90 days when the whole process of unblock your blessings is to work on your agenda now? So don't wait 90 days to figure out what you need to do. Don't wait to listen to all my sessions. Start implementing now. That's, that's, that's a biggie. If you know that you want to talk to me, don't wait until 90 days. Talk to me now <laughs> because now is the time for you to get things accomplished. So I want you to think about if you're waiting, why are you waiting? If there are things that you want right now, even outside of talking to me, just like I mentioned in the very beginning, if there are things that you want to accomplish, what are you waiting for? That's number one. Think about that right now. What exactly – are you waiting for to make those things happen for yourself? You've got to create an agenda. What are you trying to do right now to further your goals? That's important. When I open the call up for Q&A and you want to ask me questions about, you know, how I can accomplish this or how I can accomplish that, that's great. I, I answer specific questions. But when the, the idea here is, well, I just want to get it done, I just want to get it off the ground, that's, that's not clear. You've got to get clear on what you need to do to accomplish your goals right now, okay? What are your magic numbers? And I hope that most of you are a part of Unblock Your Blessings and you had the opportunity to send me your vision board. I said you've got to create your magic numbers. I just did a whole webinar this last week on how you can make real profits and better sales. The replay is already on the website, so you can watch it. It's free for everybody to watch. What are your magic numbers? Did you write them down yet? Are you working towards those numbers? Magic numbers, by the way, are the goals that you set for yourself so that you can track the things that you want to accomplish for yourself. That needs to be done. Okay? So those are some things that initially I want you to keep in mind when you are really trying to figure out what needs to happen for you to get things done. So when I talked about that consultation session gone wrong, the idea here was to choose action over anger. Choose one positive action over one negative reaction, whatever that can be, right? So like I said, sometimes there are things that happen to you and you could react in a way that you don't even want your mama to know about. It's just too bad. <laughs> but the idea here is you've really got to choose action over anger and figure out what you can do to be proactive and make your business better. 
So, for example, as I talked about with the consultation sessions, I was very resistant to be on the phone, and I knew I had to talk to clients more. One of the things that I've integrated into my website, and I would recommend if you're a service professional that you use it as well, it's called Speak Pipe, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E, speakpipe.com. It's a service where you can add a free voicemail system on to your website. So if you go to sisterfriends.com, on the right-hand side, you'll see a little tab. If you click on it, you can leave me a voice message. And after tonight's call, maybe you want to leave me one just to let me know who you are, what you do, and how you'd like us to work together in the future. It's definitely an an awesome tool. Um, They do have a free uh, package so that you can use it for free if you're on a limited budget or no budget. Um, But you want to find a way to communicate with your audience and make things happen for you. Okay? So, for example, um, like I said, this week's call coming up, you know, I do my Jumpstart Your Business calls every week. I'm going to be answering one of the questions from, I believe, Takia, who's like, look, how do I get rid of unwanted clients and attract the ones that I want? One of the things that you've got to do is create um, spaces for your clients to have better conversations with you. So using something like SpeakPipe, and I absolutely love it. Now ladies can leave me voice messages, and even men, I do have clients who are males, leave me voicemail messages, ask me questions, and I can reply back to them using the SpeakPipe service, um, and you can respond via the SpeakPipe app. So if you've got a mobile phone, you can do it on the app, or you can use your speakers on your headset on your computer. It's really easy to use. Um, and like I said, you can sign up for free, so why not, right? Now, on this topic of choosing action, one of the things that you have to do to really think about your blessings and your business, how you can get what you want and live how you please You've got to choose action over fear and resistance. And I don't have to talk to every single woman on this call tonight. There are a lot of women on this call tonight, and I'm sure there are at least a few of you who are afraid or resistant to doing what you need to do to actually make money, to actually get what you want and live how you want. You may say, no, I want it, and I'm, I'm really working hard towards it, but some of us, myself included, because I'm going to share another story with you about resistance and fear, are resistant to doing what you need to do to make things happen for yourself. Now, like I say, I do my insider circle calls where I do one-on-one sessions, and I recently had a client call, and um, we talked about the different projects that she had. More often than not, you know, you guys, you introduce yourself, and I say, well, what do you do? And you go, well, I do this. And I do this and this and this and this and this. you got like 15 different things that you do, right? But how many of them are actually monetized and working for you? Maybe one or three, but not 15. <laughs> so she got on the call with me. She has about five different things that she wanted to do. And one of my jobs is really to, to really, with, with a very laser eye, listen to what, laser eye and laser ear, I should say, um, see what you've got, look at your website, and then listen to what you've got and say, okay, well, based on all these ideas, honestly, you need to focus on this one first because this is the one that's going to be able to make you money now. So she had about five different ideas, and we narrowed it down to that paying profit project. And um, we got off the call, and she said, LaShonda, I get it. I'm excited. I'm clear. This is what's going to happen, right? Um, And like I said, one of the things, and if you listen to my other call, the last one I did last week, I said you've got to set your base goals and your reach goals, how much money you think you need to make base-wise, is how much you need. Well, I need it at least this month, much every month to maintain my personal expenses and my business expenses. That's your base. Then your reach is how much you want. And, you know, if God said the sky's the limit and you get what you need, and he, however you want it, this is your, your reach. So I'm thinking about my client, and she says, okay, LaShonda, my base is I want to make 1000 and my reach is 3200 Awesome. Okay, we're going to start there. Everybody's got to have a clear reach. Um, and a clear base, right? And, and sometimes kind of say, well, I don't want to limit myself. You're not limiting yourself when you set a base. You've got to, you've got to set a clear number on where you want to begin. So she got up the call and said, okay, this is awesome. I know what I need to do to start monetizing and hit my first base goal, and then we can work on the reach, okay? Then she had some time to think about it. A day went by, and some hours went by, and the day went by, and then she came back and said, you know what? Um, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> so, well, well, what happened? So she goes, well, there's a lot of things that are going on right now, and I think to do that thing, because I've got a bunch of different projects, but to do that thing that we're talking about now, it's going to take not money, 
not money because that's not an issue here, but it's going to take a lot of time. And it's going to take energy. I'm a little tired, and I, I do got my nine to five, and, and 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 I think I want to focus on this other thing. The other thing I really want to do, I know I'm not going to make money at it right now, but I would rather do that than do the thing that's going to make me money right now because I just don't have the energy and the time to work on that right now. We're going to continue talking, she and I, about this process. I'm not, and I'm going to tell you why I'm not mad at her because I know exactly what she's talking about. But there are a lot of times, especially as women, where we sometimes take that thing we're passionate about and we put it over the thing that we're kind of passionate about, but it can make us more money ultimately. Because I really want to focus on that passion project. And I know what her passion project is. I know that's kind of why she doesn't want to do the thing that I said, this is what's going to make you the most amount of money now. It's a part of it is the passion. But another part of it is fear. That thing that's going to make her more money now requires more time. It requires a little bit more energy. It requires more one-on-one, more go out there, get out. Go out there and get those customers and those clients to commit to buy and to commit to work with you. Sometimes it's, well, I'm young, or sometimes it's, I haven't been in this business for very long, or, well, I don't know, how much, I don't know that much. I can start, but maybe people are going to buy from me. It's fair. Resistance to getting the thing that you want, doing what you need to do now. And so, um, yes, she is blessed to be working nine to five. So I mean, she's in a position to say, okay, I don't want, I don't, I'm going to forego monetizing, forego making some money from that now so that I can focus on the thing that I'm most passionate about. And I know what that's like because I, when I was a side hustle sister and I was doing my nine to five, your nine to five is covering your expenses. So while you kind of want to reach your base goal in your business, you don't really need to do it because you've got your nine to five, right? You kind of have a crutch that helps you stay in this place of choosing the fear and the resistance versus the action, the thing that's going to move you forward, right? But you can't just focus on those things that make you feel good. Let me talk about that from a personal perspective. I never talk just about generally clients or, or even other people's experiences without saying, I know exactly how you feel because I've done it myself. <laughs> um, I said to my hubby, I said, I, I want to do my socials more. I want to do my meetups more. He said, great. What's, what's the money? You know, men, men don't think just about feel good. Men think, men think about profit. What you going to get out of this? Well, you know, not really much. I'm, we're not doing it. I'm like, hold, hold up now. <laughs> what do you mean we're not doing this? I want to do this. I want to network more. I want to have social events, and I want these women to come out because they want a community. So I want to do that. And he says, that's great. But if it's not bringing in any money, and we know that for you, the biggest and the best thing for you is web design, why don't you focus on that? But I want to. You know, I feel, I feel like a kid, honestly. You know, you get into that space. But, but I want to. And besides, I don't want to do website clients anymore because sometimes they just drive me crazy. They ask me to change things 15 times over or they want me to do like $3,000 work for $350 and I don't want to do that anymore. He said, look, get over that. You're the boss. Be clear on your policies. Like I said, I did another call and it's called how to increase your profit per sale by 50%. And I, I love doing websites, but I was resistant to it for a long time because I was bitter about the process bitter about working with clients that either were they, they couldn't afford me or they were very needy or they asked me to do a bunch of things and I didn't know how to shut that off or communicate to them in a way without being pissy, right? I never wanted to be pissy. I always wanted to be professional. But it's hard sometimes. How do you communicate? Look, if you want that, you've got to pay me more money <laughs> without pissing anybody off or, you know, ruffling feathers. So I said, okay, but I just want to focus on my socials. I had to stop being resistant to that and then figure out how to make these things more profitable for me. So I took a break. Go on to Sense, read my article called Break But Not Broken. I took a break from socials. I took a break from even my magazine, which at some point I stopped doing every month and then started doing quarterly. Now I'm doing Sense magazine again every month. But for a while I said, you know what, I'm going to stop. Because unless you're figuring out, if you're clear on how this is going to work for you so that you can get the money that you want, you can have the business that you want, and you can live the life that you want, why are you doing it, right? 
it's about being passionate, but you also have to be profitable. My, you know, my hubby was the first person to give me that reality check, and then I had to dig a little deeper and give it to myself. So if you want a profitable event, I can tell you how to do that because I've learned how to do it myself. And I figured out, you know, yes, I want to have opportunities for ladies to connect, but there has to be a smarter way to do it. For example, the client that I was talking about, actually one of the things that she's passionate about is working with um, families and families that are in low income. And, you know, sometimes we're passionate about working with the people that we want to work with, but they can't afford us. So figuring out how to be strategic when it comes to working with them, that's a part of the process, right? But you've got to get clear on that you need to do that, or else you're just going to be in a space where you're trying to work with people who can't afford you, and you're not making enough money that you need to make, and it's just a vicious, vicious cycle, okay? So that's why I say, are you clear on your magic numbers? Do you know how much you need to make, how much you want to make, how much you have to make? What is your inventory? What are your prices? How many sales do you need to get? Um, for example, if you got books, how many books you got to get off the shelf to actually make some money this month? If you say, well, I just want to make $500, well, how many books do you need to sell this month to make $500? What are your magic numbers? These have to be clear. So like I said, I had that reality check that I helped my client receive, and we're still working on that. But I understand the process, and I said to her, okay, fine. If you don't want to focus on that, we're going to figure out how to focus on those things that you want to monetize for now. It took me a while to get back into the web game. I didn't just overnight do calls and, you know, do more web projects. And even though I knew that I could potentially get, you know, there are days when I get clients and I say, wow. I think about some of the clients that I have on retainer and say, wow, I think I've been working with this client for a couple of months and this has been like a $10,000 project. And, and I was resistant to working with more clients. Why? Because the, 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 the process was stressful, or I didn't know how to sell and that was stressful, or I kind of wanted to do that other stuff because that other stuff felt really good. <laughs> and as women, you know, we like to nurture, we like to empower, and sometimes how we see the business, how, how we, we define the business, we're not clear on the monetization part, and sometimes we're willing to forego the profit just to do that thing that we really want to do, Right? but then it becomes frustrating and the passion becomes a pain. I know some of you had the opportunity to watch that. Um, you were at the Power Circle Conference that I did this year um, in January. Again, like I said, I'm going to have the, the Power Circle Conference in January again um, at powercircle.sysassense.com. You can register. But then you can watch the replays. My session was on your passion and how that passion becomes a pain. Web design was a pain for me. But I had to get clear on what I wanted, and now it's not a pain. <laughs> now I enjoy what I do a lot more than I did before. It had nothing to do with money, and, it, again, it, it, it wasn't about just the customers. It was about the process, which is kind of why I want to talk to you guys about this today because I think for some people it's not about the people or the money. It's about the process and about those things that you're trying to focus on in your business. Those business models, some of them are either not going to make money for you, but you're so passionate about that, you've kind of been blocking out that reality, or they have the potential to make money for you, but you're not quite clear on how. And this is what you need to focus on, what you want, what's not working, what you don't want, and how to fix it. Those are the areas we need to focus on for you, okay? So like I said, the first thing I want you to do now as we continue this clarity process is I want you to write down three to five profit projects. Everybody has to have a focus. So when you think about your business and the projects that you're working on right now, list at least three of the, if you, you can only list one, but I always say three to five because everybody's got a lot of things going on, different options, three to five profit projects, things that are, you do that are working for you. Now, for some people, you'll say, okay, yeah, that makes me money, but I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I don't really want to do that. I want to do these. I want to do these. Um, then let's talk. Go to circle back. Let's, let's, let's talk about how you can do that thing that's actually making money. Make it better. Okay? 
don't close it down. Good God, God, don't close it down. Some folks, they go, I don't want to do this anymore, and they close it down. Make it better. So when you look at those three to five profit projects for yourself, I want you to think about this question. What do you focus on the most and why? Okay? Like if I, if I go backwards, maybe, I don't know, two, three years, I can tell you I was not focusing on my web clients as much as I'm focusing on them now. And I would always say, especially for those of you who have been following me for years, I'll say, okay, I, don't, I didn't do more than two, two to three projects because I've got so much going on. I don't do more than two to three projects a month. A part of that process was I just didn't like the process of working with web clients, and I didn't fix it for myself. So I was limiting my money. I was limiting my cash flow because I wanted to do the other stuff that made me feel good. Some of that stuff was okay. It wasn't that great. didn't make me as much money as quickly, but I focused on it. Right? So this is why I want you to answer that question. What do you focus on the most right now and why? Why are you not doing that other stuff? And if you don't know what should be making you the most amount of money, then that's the problem. You need to get clear on how much money exactly is this stuff supposed to bring me in. Those magic numbers. Go watch that other video I did this week. How to in, um, what was it called? It was about real profits and better sales. And I, I break down how to create your magic numbers in that. I think that was the best um, session I've done thus far in breaking down magic numbers. And the video is on sistersense.com, so you can watch that too. What do you focus on the least and why? Let's get to the heart of the problem. Are you not doing that thing because you don't want to, it's not profitable, or you're resisting it, you're afraid of it? Why exactly are you not focusing on that thing? Okay. So there are different things that everybody's focused on here. Everybody has their own unique areas. As you ask yourself these questions, I also want you to think about when you say why I can't get what I want or why can't I live the life that I want to live. Because honestly, the first step in Unlock Your Blessings is to choose control. We make things happen for ourselves, believe it or not. It's not just about the circumstances, the finances, the people, what goes on and what people say. We are in control of our businesses and our lives. So when you say to yourself, this is why I can't get what I want, this is why this is not happening, it's not working, I want you to also ask yourself a question, is there anything I am afraid of right now? What are some things that I am honest to God afraid of? Because sometimes your success your ability to move forward and get what you want is rooted in that fear. I was resistant to talking to people. To some degree, I was afraid to talk to people. At some point, I felt very long ago, but, you know, especially as a newbie, uh, uh, you know, some of these ladies I'm talking to are like twice my senior. What the hell can I say to them that they haven't already heard, that they, they, don't, they don't already know? I had to come to the point where I understood what my unique selling proposition was, as I talked to one of my clients about this week, um, this past week when we did a one-on-one, -on -one, and she said, well, Sean, there's so many other people doing what I do. How do I stand out? And especially when I talk to people who are older than me and who've been in the business longer, what is my unique selling proposition? I had to figure that out. So I now know how to do that for others, and I was able to go through the process with her, and we talked about what her unique selling proposition is. And I understand. I know what the hell I'm talking about as far as marketing online and how to make sales and how to get clear on actually being profitable. So it doesn't matter who's older than me or who's senior or who's done their profession or business longer than me. When you get on a call, I always say, when it comes to your business, you're the expert. But you're talking to me because I'm about profit sales and online marketing, and that's where I'm the expert. So being clear on what your unique selling proposition is, trust me, it's like the, the biggest confidence booster because you know you're not competing with your clients as far as their level of expertise and their experience. You're talking to them from the perspective of who you are and what you do as the expert in the room. Okay? So what are you afraid of? What are you secretly putting off? There are things that you say, okay, I want these things. To, I want things to happen. I want to unblock my blessings now. And I'm going to go through this 90-day challenge with you, LaShonda. I'm going to make things happen. But what are you putting off? You know me. If you listen to me in these over the last few years, you know my first mantra has and will forever be just do it. 
Don't get me wrong. I don't just blindly do things. I think about things strategically, but you can't be resistant. You got to just do it. So what are you putting off? And what are you doing to make what you need happen? So let me talk about another client of mine, um, Artesthesia. She's one of the lovely ladies who's a part of Unblock Your Blessings. If you go to the website, unblockyourblessings.com, you see that I featured her Be Blessed Vision Board. And one of the things that she said to me, by the way, and if you're a part of the process, send me your progress reports. Tell me what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes I can't respond because, trust me, it is truly a one-to-many situation where there's one of me and many of you. But I am listening, I'm watching, and I'm here silently and even not excuse me, not silently when we talk together. I'm rooting for you and I'm cheering, I'm rooting you on. So Artisty just said, well, one of the things I want to do is I want to build my list, right? So you, okay, what are your magic numbers? You want to build your list. How many people do you want to have on your list? Set a number. Let's say arbitrarily you say, okay, this is 30, 90 days we're going to work together. So every 30 days I want 100 people. So at the end I've got 300 people on my list after the 90 days. That's my goal. Okay. So what are you going to do every week so that you've got 25 people coming in a week so at the end of the week you've got 100 people at the end of the month, okay? Those are those numbers. You've got to get clear on that. Now, these are not her numbers. I'm just throwing these numbers out there. But what are you doing to reach your goal? So on my Be Blessed Vision Board, I talk about my, uh, my desire to get all my lists to 100,000 each. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, okay, I say on the topic of building a list, here are three things that I'm doing now. Well, because I'm asking you to do things, and I want you to be clear on the question. Sometimes when I ask a question, people go, well, what do you mean by that? I don't get what she's saying. And I think somebody just said that, by the way, in the chat room. Um, what are you doing to, what is the goal? What do you want to accomplish? And what are you doing that for that? So I've got a similar goal. I've got a list already. I've got multiple lists, but I want my list to be bigger, right? So one, yesterday, actually, I went to the minority here. That's a local event in Greenville. I got a table at Vendor because I talked about networking and what you need to do to build your market locally. If you haven't read that, I just recently posted that this weekend on Sister Sense. So going out to that event, that was one thing. Having a table, that was another. When people came to my table and they asked me questions, I had my computer set up. I had my sign-up form there, and this is something that you can do. Definitely bring your iPad or your computer. My sign-up form was right there, and I said, okay, put your information in there. (laughs) I didn't just take a business card because sometimes you take those cards and you don't do anything with it, or I didn't have them write their name down on a list and then never look at that list again. I made sure that the minute they said they wanted something from me, I automatically in that space had them sign up directly from my laptop, built my list by every single person that I met and connected with at the networking expo yesterday. That was one way I physically built the list. So when I say, what are you doing to accomplish your goals and get what you want, you've got to be able to jot that down and say, these are the things that I'm doing to make it happen. Not just, I want to make it happen. I want to sell more books. I want to get more clients. I want to make more money. What are you doing to control the situation and make that happen? So that was number one. Number two, my free webinars. I love this. I can do this all day, every day, and I get so many wonderful ladies who are already part of the circle that come on the call. And just as you heard when we started, there were a couple of ladies who this is their first call with me. And every time I do a free webinar, you guys have to sign up, and then you get on my list, and yay! (laughs) It's a wonderful, exciting way to engage, to inform, to answer questions, to talk to you, and build the list. So number two, what am I doing? Going out to events, I'm also sharing information via webinars. Number three, what am I doing? Go on Sister Sense and you'll see I've got a different, um, different opportunities and subscription programs and offerings. One of them is with my Web Money Toolbox. I have several workshops and webinars that I like my uh, new clients and new potential clients and online listeners and viewers to watch so they can get a sense of how I can help them and get some answers to their preliminary questions. So I've got my Web Money Toolbox. You go on Sister Sense, you sign up, and you get that. An opportunity for me to build a relationship with clients, but again, build a list. One, two, three, three different things to build a list. What are you doing? Now, as I keep saying this question, I, I, I'm hoping that some of you are kind of jotting down ideas and recommendations based on what I'm doing, but thinking about what you're doing and if you're doing some things, is it working well for you? Um, this past week, I think it was Renee, we worked on her squeeze page so that she can give out one of her wonderful free reports and ebooks so she can build her list. 
So that's the process, you know, getting me to design the squeeze page, set up the email list. I can do that. I can sit on the phone with you and ask, answer questions inside the circle on what you need to do. But the point is you got to do something, right? You got to figure out what exactly do you want and what you're going to do to make that happen, okay? So like I said, at circle.sistersense.com, for those of you who are interested in doing one-on-one sessions with me, don't wait. Sign up. Um, I, I uh, Like I said, it's a one-to-many situation, and I'm trying to do as many of these one-on-ones as I possibly can, especially within the first 90 days of Unblock Your Blessings. I'm really committed to working and sharing and engaging one-on-one with all of the lovely ladies in my circle who want to make things happen right now. And so it's, it's my mission to get you clear on what you need to do and then give you instructions on how I done, I've done it um, so that you can kind of duplicate in that action in your business. So I'm going to wrap up in a second so I can open up this call and you can ask me questions. You've got to choose action over anger, fear, and resistance, whatever that is, whether it be unblocking your blessings or your business to get what you want and make things happen, live how you please. You know right now, because I've talked to you about this today, that you're in control. You're the one that's in control. And it may take some time for this to really sink in and resonate and for one day for you to go, I got it. I'm ready. But at least you've got somebody in your corner telling you how it happened and how I made it happen at the very least. Get clear on what you want versus what you don't want. Crystal clear, down to the T, what is it that, uh, what it is that you want, forgive me in my tongue sideways, what it is that you want and don't want so you can fix it. Like I talked about in the beginning of this session, the consultation gone wrong. I was pissed as, you know, I, what's the phrase, hot as fish grease? <laughs> Because, you know, I'm like, I knew I didn't want to do these doggone calls. I did this call, and what I thought was going to happen, happened. But it wasn't her fault. It was mine. I was wet behind the ears. I didn't know really that there was a process and a system to doing consultations. Because I wanted to please her and I really wanted to prove that I knew what I knew, I gave way too much information. I did not control the conversation. I ultimately let her just sit there and ask me everything she wanted under the sun, and I gave it to her. So I had to choose action over anger versus saying I'm never going to do a consultation again. I had to figure out how to make it better versus saying you're going to shut down what you're doing now because you're tired and frustrated and you don't want to do it anymore. Let's talk about how you can make it better, okay? And create a POA, plan of action to achieve your goals. What are you going to do within these next 90 days? And then what are you going to do after that? Remember I talked about creating that Be Blessed Vision Board, which is a part of the Unblock Your Blessings Challenge? In my Be Blessed Vision Board, my system to putting this together so I can ensure that I'm being productive and actually achieving goals, you've got to set what you want to happen now, these 90 days, your agenda for now, your POA, your plan of action, and then next. So after the 90 days, what's supposed to happen next? You've got to be clear on that and set those goals and work towards them, Okay that you can get what you want and make things happen. Now, I'm about to open this up so that you all, I can talk to you because I love when I talk to you guys. Um, But, of course, before I do, just to um, remind you all, as I've got these little random pop-ups here coming on my computer, just to remind you all, as always, you have to be clear on what it is that you want in your business. And as part of my mission to helping you get clear, I have the Unblock Your Blessings 90-Day Challenge. So it's free, and if you haven't participated in it before, um, I absolutely want you to to sign up. Like I said, um, it begins when you begin. You get the first step as soon as you sign up, and every week for 12 weeks, every week, I send you a step. It's in the form of audio, so you don't have to read. You can just put it in, listen, and really figure out what you need to do. These are the, my life lessons learned as far as the fundamental things we need to unblock within ourselves so that we can build our best businesses, lives, and selves. Okay? And, of course, Happening at the Aloft Hotel in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in January is Unblock Your Blessings, the Power Circle Live Conference, which you can attend, or you can participate via virtual webinars. And um, I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the call. There are two early bird seats left at this point, um, and this 
particular conference is for 30 to 45 women. So if you do want to participate, um, you can get an early bird ticket at powercircle.sysdefense.com. And uh, for those of you on the call, definitely try to use the code 45OFF. Um, so you can get $45 off registration, not an extra special gift from me to you. So let's get back into blessings and business. I want to now open up the call so I can have an opportunity to talk to you all who are here today. And essentially, I want you to, one, I want you to share with me what you're going to do now <laughs> so that you can start um, unblocking and, and being more profitable and productive. What are some things that you've got to do now? And um, also, of course, if you've got a question for me about anything that we've talked about today, um, now is the time. Now is the time to ask those questions. So you can hit star six if you would like to unmute yourself and talk to me. Our Q and A opportunity for today. Woo! Got to take a sip of water here. I'm so not used to talking. I talk for an hour, and I'm like, oh my god. My throat, my throat. <laughs> Hi, LaShonda. Hey, Renee, how are you? Oh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, I really like your message because the uh, uh, last couple of days has been really actually geared towards me about, I told you before I had to like, like close down my business and I was focusing on some things that at this point I'm focused on two projects that, like you said, are not making money. Okay. Mm. I have to look at, rearrange my place and open my business again to get clients one-on-one. I was trying to get away from clients from one-on-one and do mainly coaching from the phone, but it doesn't seem that way. So I'm going to have to go to the other route, which is go one-on-one face-to-face because I need the money so I can focus on those other projects that are not getting me money. I know one project will, but that's not going to be really until April, but yeah. Well, I mean, that's the case sometimes. Sometimes you've got to, you know, shift your focus and do the thing. Sometimes we feel like we don't want to do it, you got to do the thing you don't want to do to get do the things you want to do. Um, right. But I think in everything that we do, we're passionate about it to some degree. It's just figuring out what happened to that passion and, and, and making it fun again. No, true, because I noticed when I was dating somebody, uh, he too, the first thing he would say, oh, you're giving a newsletter, but you're giving these tips away. You need to charge people. Men think like that. It's always mm-hmm. my girl, co-worker, we saw this girl online and she made $24 million for making jewelry, and then this year she's going to make $250 million. And we're thinking at, I think she's 14 years old, what is wrong with us? What mm. is wrong with wow. us? Wow. And so we're like, and her husband said the very same, same thing, you're baking these cakes, but are you making money? You know, are you making mm. good money? So it's right. getting that mindset, just that mindset. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got to have that mindset shift um, to see what you can do to really be profitable now and how you can Mm -hmm. fix it and make it better. So then when you have that profit coming in, then you can do all that other stuff and and have the patience to do it the right way. So while it's going to take some time for it to become profitable, you're not frustrated in the process because you have other means of bringing in money. Correct, correct. Because I used to do that with a massage service. If I want a particular machine or equipment or certain things that's going to help me massage, I would do, okay, come in and cut the price down to maybe $35 an hour, you know, come in or two for something, you know. And yeah. I would go and, bam, I would make over 300 to $500 in a weekend. Mm. So I have to get back that mindset that I've lost over years about, you know, well, you know my story, working full-time, the health yep. issues and blah, blah, blah. Right. Right, so, right. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad the the call resonated with you in some way. It did. It did, as always. <laughs> Anyone else on the call want to unmute themselves, you can hit start six to do so. And like I said, let me know what you thought, if you've got questions, and what you feel like your focus is going to be as far as your 90-day agenda. I saw Sandra on the call. She said, will do. I've got to read this chat here and and see what you guys are talking about. Will do. Hey, LaShonda, it's Sandra. Hey, Sandra, how are you? I'm doing much better, thank you. I had a quick question. Renee just said something that kind of piqued my interest. Um, Meeting clients, if you can talk about meeting clients face-to-face, 
-hmm. and the safety issues and things like that. Because I really want to do it on the phone, but you know, it, you know how people are. Some people say, oh, "I would like to meet you and have maybe a one-hour session." What's your view on that? Um, for me, it depends on your comfort level, right? So, you know, obviously, if you are going to do um, meetings face to face, where do you feel like it's going to be the most convenient for you and your budget? Um, there are spaces, there are co-working spaces where you can rent out a, a meeting office or a virtual room. Maybe you want to look into that. Obviously, those spaces have um, offices and conference rooms so that you're in a public setting, but it's professional and it's quiet. You can do something like that. Or depending on what type, type of consultation you're doing, maybe you can say, well, let's meet at the library or let's meet at Panera Bread. Um, really, it depends on the type of coaching and consulting you do because I've, I've seen clients meet with people <laughs> in the library or, you know, at a local coffee shop um, or even at Barnes & Nobles. Um, thinking about that, obviously, you would want to meet in a public space but then gauge on whatever you're offering. If you feel like it's enough to meet in a public space that's more social, like a bookstore or a coffee shop, or if you want to invest your time and your funds into getting um, a co-working space where you can have a private office or meeting room, okay? Which one would work best on for you based on your business and also obviously based on your budget? And what I've seen as far as co-working spaces, there are a lot of them that are not that expensive and if you work it correctly as far as how you're pricing your cons your consultations um, you'll see that you can recoup the cost of renting out the space within the, um, the price of your sessions great thank you so much I really appreciate that then the second thing I had for you sure was, was that you said that you went to um, the minority as a vendor and my mm -hmm. question to you is um, do you sell products when you're there, and how comfortable are you in doing that? Okay, oh, I'll answer the second question before I ask you. Let me ask you a question. When you say comfortable, what do you mean? Well, I, I'm just thinking, you know, you do so many great things online, but for, you know, a newbie, you know, like maybe you only have one product. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And are you just like, come over here, come to my table? I mean, you want to be professional. <laughs> are you trying to flag them down? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm just, I well, know you're probably professional, so go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what, what, before I answer the question, what I kind of want to get to the heart of is, is there something that makes you uncomfortable? Um, well, I, I always wanted to do vendoring, but I only have one product, and that's a book that I did, and I'm just trying to think, my friends, oh, there's a, you know, a vendoring um, event coming up, and, and They'll say, oh, come to my table. I'll see people say, oh, come to my table. I'm like, I don't want them to come to my table. I don't want them to think I'm desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There, there are so many wonderful things that you can do. Obviously, I've got a lot of products and services online, and people say, well, how do you go from digital and virtual to actually having something tangible at an event where most of your stuff is digital and services? Well, okay, I'm going to put up a picture and you, so you guys can see my table at the Minority Expo. I've got a huge picture of the Power Circle Conference, and I got my picture posted up on a poster board um, so that people can see that. That's very attractive because, you know, pictures are worth a thousand words. So when people are looking at tables and they see big banners or big images, they're going to go, what's that? Who's that? I want to, and, and a couple of people, a couple of the speakers are, are familiar to people. Pam Perry, everybody knows Pam. Say, oh, Pam is coming to North Carolina. Yes. <laughs> and they get excited. Or um, Carla Cannon, she's a local woman here. She's created the Women of Standard magazine. So people came and said, oh, I know her. It's a, a huge poster attracted attention. Um, for me, like I said, most of my par products are digital in nature, but I found a way to turn my digital products into tangible ones. Sister Sense Magazine is a print um, embodiment of what I write in my blog, right? So it's now a, a physical product of something that was digital. My Power Circle conferences are all audio. I put them on CD, so now i got another tangible product of something that was digital. And like I said before, I have my computer on the table. So people came up and they said, okay, I'd like more information. I had them sign up. So I've got the computer there for them to sign up. The table also has postcards and business cards. Everybody loves postcards and business cards. So you don't just need – you don't – you don't only have to have your book. You can have the computer for people to sign up, your postcards, your business cards. I find authors, a lot of times they'll create book cards, um, bookmarks, 
with their branding on it so they can also have that additional information on the table. So it's about getting creative about what kind of material you have. And, of course, a lot of times people will have raffles. I had a raffle. I gave away um, some material. I gave away a magazine. And um, you can have other ways. You know, come to my table, but, you know, well, if you come back to my table, you fill this out or you leave your business card, you can enter the raffle. Um, or here's one of my branded pens. So when you think about the, the process, it's not just, oh, I only have a book. There's so much more that you can add to your table than the book. Um, it's just about being creative about it and just giving it a little bit more thought. Um, and, of course, it, it really it's not about being desperate. You're, you're there with a table because you've got something to showcase. So you want to be excited and say, hey, guys, come to my table, because I found that when you, you're excited about what you do, you give people that energy as well. Sometimes you, when you're kind of sitting there and you're quiet and you're like, please, God, don't look at me, people aren't going to come because you kind of look standoffish, like he doesn't okay. really want me to come over. So you want to, you know, you want to be energetic and you want to bring that inviting energy into the conversation so people go, oh, I want to be in her space. My long-winded answer. <laughs> Thank so you. Shonda? I really appreciate that. And the article was awesome. Awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. We'll you're be welcome. talking really soon. Trust me. Okay. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Like I said, you guys, you can either go to, one second, um, you can either go to callme.sysadvantage.com to schedule uh, a 30 or 60 minute session with me, call me. Or um, I know for those of you who know that you're going to be, well, at least need to work with me for a couple of months, um, definitely go to circle.sysadvantage.com, sysadvantage, I always say it so fast. So you can become a part of my insider circle and get one-on-one sessions. Um, Yes. Someone had a question? Yeah, it's me, Renee. I just want to add one more thing to sure. that thing because, you know, I sell books, and so therefore uh, I've been to book fairs, so Sandra won't feel, like you said, like you're desperate. Sometimes, like you said, you can have a basket there of, well, with either your one book, and let's say my book is dealing with stress, I might have some stress-free products in there, massage oils or something nice back as a raffle. And that mm. attracts people if you don't, if you feel like, oh, come to my table, you feel like you're being desperate. And people will gravitate, even if you have candy, as I oh, yeah. say something, definitely people will come. Or if you really decorate your table with plants or the posters or the banners, people will come. And it depends on the event. If it's mostly books and everything, people are going to definitely stop by each office. You don't want to feel that it's, uh, well, I only got, like you said, one book. That one book is a product, and it could be something that somebody's looking for. Absolutely. So you can thank you. That's, such a great point. You can expand it in so many ways. And trust me, you don't know how attractive some chocolate and candy can be at an event. <laughs> okay. People said, oh, what's that? I need, I need a mint right now because she got some mints. Hey, girl, what you doing? So you just, it really depends on how creative you can be in your budget um, to really make your, your table or even one product or a digital product work for you. Thank so, you so much. You're welcome. Um, just before we wrap up, I want to make sure if anyone else has a question or a comment, you can um, talk to me now. Does anyone else would like to share what they're doing if they have any questions? Um, and I absolutely want to know, um, based on tonight's call, if you feel like there's something that you feel like you're going to work on now. So as I sit here and, and quietly and patiently wait for you all, you can, um, like I said, you can hit star six if you would like to ask any other final questions of me. Um, as I mentioned before, Unblock Your Blessings really culminates when we connect in January at the 2014 Sister Sense Power Circle Conference. I've got some lovely ladies coming out and talking about so many different things as far as how you can unlock your blessings and focus on your branding and your marketing and your books and your promotion, whatever your product or service is, um, really an opportunity to connect and engage. I had one of the ladies come out and they, they, they commented and said, you know, I'm really looking forward to the event and, and God willing I can come out because I really need the fellowship. If you're interested in having a, a 
supportive space with not just the speakers, but other women who can talk to you and encourage you, I definitely would say this is a wonderful opportunity. And, and I'm excited about having it be the second power circle because I want it to be traditional um, for me and for those of you who are here to come out and really get that that sense of support. I know one of the ladies, I mentioned her today on the call, Artesthesia. She was one of the first people who signed up last year when I said I was going to do the Power Cycle 2013, and she said, okay, I just signed up, and I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to get there or when I'm going to get the tickets of the hotel, but I signed up because I know I'm going to make it happen, and she took that action. I had to laugh when she sent me the email, but really that's what it is, you know, when you kind of walk out on faith and you make that commitment to yourself to take an action and, and make it happen. So, and she made it happen. She came out to the Power Circle Conference, and um, she's been working with me on BBWO as my social media manager, and we paused that for a second. We're getting back into it. Um, as I talked about on the article that I wrote, it's called Break But Not Broken. Um, I had to take a break from revamping BBWO and, and focus on Sense for a minute, but um, it's just an opportunity for you to connect with other people and learn and grow in fellowship. I believe that's something that's really important. Um, as I always say about Sense, the success of your business depends on the company that you keep, and I definitely want to make sure that you're in good company when you're inside the circle. So um, last call for anyone here who'd like to share or ask me a question before we wrap up for tonight. Okay. I guess what I'm going to do is uh, wrap up tonight's call and definitely take this opportunity to uh, connect with those of you who are still on Twitter because we can tweet the night away together. Um, <laughs> but, of course, I do have to be mommy and then um, read my son his bedtime story. His bedtime is 8.30, so mom is a little late. But um, I always like to put the mom back in work at home mom when I do these sessions and then get back to being mommy. But as always, I absolutely enjoy when I have these sessions with you so I can share my lessons learned and answer your questions, definitely stay connected. The next call is this week. Like I said, I will be focusing on how you can get rid of those clients you don't want and attract more of the ones that you do, um, definitely sharing some of those nuggets of wisdom. And if you're not already a part of it, you can go to join.sistersense.com or even jumpstart.sistersense.com so that you can become a part of our weekly Jumpstart Your Business sessions. Yes, it is $7. Um, because like I said, I started out on a floss string budget. I know what it's like to be on a small budget, so I want to make sure that if you want to be a, a part of my weekly calls, budget is not a part of the equation. Uh, you can sign up to Sense for $7 and participate every week. We've got lots of fun um, opportunities to engage, and I do have a contest. I don't know if you guys listen, guys listen to the replays. Listen to the last replay because I do have a contest for you guys to participate in. These last couple of weeks I've been talking about user engagement and how you kind of build your tribe and get people to be more active and responsive to the things that you are offering online. So definitely listen to that replay and participate in the concert, contest. Look, goodness. I definitely know it's time for me to go when I'm tongue-tied. Um, but that is all on Jumpstart Your Business, those weekly calls that I'm doing. So, again, thank you all so much for participating. I look forward to seeing some of you in January and definitely talking to a lot of you this next week on our next Jumpstart Your Business call. So have a beautiful and blessed evening, ladies. Enjoy your week. Bye.